Yes, you have to learn about AWS security right now. That's because everyone is already on Amazon Web Services. The cloud is already here. Wait, what, you don't believe me? Check this one out right here. And this is going to be the agenda for today. So one, what we're going to do is we're going to set up our certificate authority. So what we can do is by generating a key pair of OpenSSL for our certificate authority. And number two, what we do is to create a self-signed PEM file, all right? So what happens is from here, what we will do is that this is going to be uploaded into the AWS IAM rules anywhere. Number three, then we will generate, all right, the client key as well as the client signing request file, all right? So generate a client key as well as the CSR file. And then from here, right, we will generate a client.pem file to be used as an option when using the AWS IAM roles anywhere. And number four, then we'll set up the trust ankle, all right, from the AWS IAM roles anywhere. And number five, what we'll do is to create the role in AWS IAM, all right, as well as the profile in AWS IAM roles anywhere, okay? And to this the end, I'll be showing you an example of an application or a script that you can easily write that will leverage on AWS IAM roles so that you're able to get the AWS IAM role in order to access an AWS account. So this is beautiful, watch to the end. So right in front of us, I'm already on my AWS management console. So you can see right here on the top right corner, Loy Liang Yang. And all you gotta do right now is head over into the search bar and enter identity access management or whichever the case is. And you see under IAM, go ahead and clicked on it. So once you clicked on it, you load into the IAM service. And if you see on the left side, we have what we call roles. So go ahead and click on that. And once you click on the roles, scroll all the way down, all right? Scroll all the way down and you see something called the AWS IAM rules anywhere. So go ahead and click under manage. Once you're in AWS IAM rules anywhere, you can see right here, all right? We have the following, which is the setup steps. So we have three steps that are needed. And the very first step is what we call setting up of a certificate authority followed by a thrust ankle. So you can establish the thrust between your AWS account and your certificate authority. So go ahead and click on create a thrust ankle. And once you're here, there are two options available. So perhaps you do not have a certificate manager private certificate authority. And what you can do then is to create your own one. So you select under external certificate bundle. And all you got to do right here is to paste the certificate bundle, all right? And you'll be able to gain access to your AWS environment once you create your roles, your profile within AWS IAM roles anywhere. So let's give it a trust ankle name. Let's call it Hacker Loy Thrust Ankle, all right? And the next question you have is how can we generate this section? And yes, I'll show you exactly how you can do just that. So what we can do now is go ahead and open up terminal. And in terminal, what you can do is you can enter, say, locate openssl.cnf. So what we're going to do is to leverage on OpenSSL to help us generate those certificates. So here, you can see the following, or we can cd into at c SSL. All right, and once you're here, we can do a cat openssl.cnf. All right, so once you have opened up the file, you have viewed into the file, you can see a critical segment right here, okay? So this critical segment, as you can see, is starting with v3 underscore c. A, all right, so this is the part that is going to be critical. And what you want to do is you want to fill in the section right here, okay? So you have the following, which is your subject key identifier, you have your authority key identifier, your basic constraints, as well as key usage. The next thing you want to do is to be able to generate private key. So in this case, we can enter, say, open SSL, and we have a couple of options. So the first option, it could be using, say, EC param, followed by, say, gen key, and then after that, we have a name. So in this case, maybe call it SCCP, followed by, say, 384. All right, and then R1, and then we can do a out, say, for example, root CA.key. So that's an example for this. So we can use super user do, hit enter on that, enter a password, and that's it. All right, so I can enter, say, for example, all right, LS, and then I can do a grab root CA.key, and then you can see right here we have created a file. And of course, if I want to view more information about a file, I can do LS L, and you can see right here we have created a file. So what I'm going to do now is navigate over into my home directory and cd into .aws. So once we are here, I'll be using another option available for us to generate a private key. So in this case, I can put OpenSSL gen RSA followed by out. Now I'll call this private root all right, CA dot key, and we'll use, of course, 2048 as our key size. Hit enter on that, 
All right, so again, use super easy to do, and that's it, done. And at any point in time, you have no idea what's going on, you can always head over to openssl.org, and from here, you can see all the different types of options that are available. So you have, for example, here, our right, web we have AES128, we have DAS, all right, we have the different engine, numbits, and so on and so forth. So all these are the different availability of the options for us as we're using OpenSSL to generate a certificate. Next up, what we're doing here is to create and process a certificate request. All right, so here we have our self-signed certificate for use as root CA, for example. And of course, in this case, we are going to generate a new certificate request. All right, so go ahead and hit enter on that. Okay, let's go ahead and enter super easy to do. Hit enter on that again, and now we have that. So go ahead and enter, say, country name, SG. All right, maybe a state or province, the locality name, say, for example, like city, or right, the organization name, let's call it Hacker Loy. And then, of course, we have the organizational unit name. So let's call it Rate Team. Hit enter on that, common name, email address. That's it, done. And of course, you can always validate, all right, whatever we have generated. So in this case, we can validate the private root ca.pam. So go ahead and hit enter on that. And you can see the following. All right, so we have all this different information here. We have the version. All right, we have the serial number, the signature algorithm, and all these different other details that we have there, like a public key algorithm. We have the public key. All right, so this is 2048 bit that we have specified earlier. Okay, and then of course, you scroll down, you have the signature value, and so on and so forth. Next up, what we can do is to generate our client entity. So in this case, we can enter OpenSSL Gen RSA and then out. Let's call it client entity dot key to your forward once again. So in this case, we're generating the private key for the client entity. Hit enter on that. Done. Next up, we can use OpenSSL. All right. So in this case, we'll be requesting all right a new, and of course, we have the input of the key. In this case, client entity dot key, and we want to have the output with the certificate signing request file. So in this case, we can enter client entity dot CSR. Hit enter on that. Again, country name, state, all right, we have the locality. Let's call this hacker loy for the organization name. And then, of course, organization unit. Let's call it rate team. All right, so we have all these different other details, a challenge password, option, a company name, and that's it done. So now again, we're requesting, all right, so in this case, we have the client entity, all right, followed by CSR, then we have the certificate authority. So this is going to be the private root ca.pam file that we created. And then of course, we have the certificate authority key. So this is going to be the private root ca.key that we created earlier, set underscore zero, zero, one, and then out, client entity.pam, all right, then number of days, 365, and then we have shard 256. And of course, in this case, we have an extension file of course, in this situation, we have v3.ext. Hit enter on that. Okay, let's go ahead and put a super user do. All right, and that's it. Done. So you'll be asking exactly what's in the v3.ext file. So right here, you can see the following. We have the authority key identifier, basic constraints, as well as the key usage as part of generating the file. And all we're going to do right now is go ahead and look at all the files that we've generated. And then after which, we want to do a CAD on the target file of private root ca.pam. All right, so in this case, let's go ahead and hit enter on that. So remember, we have to have it in the privacy enhanced mill format. So in this case, we have the begin certificate as well as end certificate. So copy this whole chunk of information, go back to AWS IAM roles anywhere, paste it right here, and that's it. Done. Go ahead and click create a thrust ankle. All right, and then we can see right here, okay? So this is the hacker Lloyd thrust ankle that we have created. So you see here, they have a couple of them, and of course, if you scroll all the way to the right, you can see the update of that. So in this case, perhaps I wanna select on the second one that we created way earlier, and what I can do now is to go ahead and disable that. So I select on the second hacker Lloyd thrust ankle, all right, and of course, I go under actions, and I click disable, all right? So in this case, I can go ahead and disable it, or I could even, go ahead and delete that thrust that we have. So let's go ahead and delete that. And all you got to do now is copy the thrust ankle ID, click delete, and that's it, done. Now, the next step is to go back into IAM roles. And from IAM roles, what we want to do now is to create a role that allows AWS IAM roles anywhere to have that thrust policy. All right, so let's go ahead and select under custom thrust policy. And you can see all the information right here. So we'll be filling it in. So you can see right here, I have created the thrust policy, I fill it in, and all we gotta do now is go ahead and scroll all the way down, and then we can go ahead and click under next. So once you click on the next, what you can do here is you can specify the permissions that you want to provide. So in this case, perhaps I want to look up for S3. And in this situation, I want to say, okay, perhaps I give you Amazon S3 read only access. So exactly as what you typically do. And then scroll all the way down and go ahead and click on the next. 
Okay, now what we have to do is to give it a role name. So in this case, press I can call it, all right, AWS S3 IAM roles anywhere. Okay, so once I have this role information, let's go ahead and place it as a description. And of course, in this case, we have the trusted entities, all right, which is roles anywhere.amazonaws.com. And after that, we have the permissions. Go ahead and click create role. Okay, so you can see the following, all right? Role AWS S3 IAM roles anywhere created. Move back over to AWS IAM roles anywhere. And once you're here, you want to go over to step two, which is configure roles. So we can go ahead and click on a configure profile. And once we're right here, all you got to do is enter a profile name. So let's go ahead and call this say S3, all right, roles anywhere. So once I have that, you scroll all the way down and you can see the following roles, all right? So I clicked on it and we can see a couple of roles that have been specified. So in this case, let's go ahead and select the one that we have created earlier, which is S3, all right, roles anywhere. And once we have this information, we can go ahead and remove the session policy, okay? And then scroll all the way down, all right, go ahead and click create a profile. That's it, done. We have successfully created a profile S3 roles anywhere. Now here comes the exciting part, all right? So we can use the AWS signing helper to help us get the temporary credentials. So in this case, we have, for example, all right, Linux, Windows, Darwin. I've already downloaded the file. So as you can see here, I can enter LS and we can see the following, which is AWS signing helper on the left. So there are three things that we need to specify from AWS. And one is, of course, your trust ankle ARN. So let's go ahead and enter that. So we have dash dash trust ankle all right, ARN. And then we can go over to AWS IEM. All right, and we can go back into the trust ankle that we've created earlier. Go ahead and copy the Amazon resource name. Go back to terminal. Go ahead and paste it right here, okay? So once you paste it over here, all right, let me just go ahead and move this to the earlier segment so that we can remove those extra characters that we have, okay? And then once you have that, the next thing we need to do is to say specify the profile on. So go back over into AWS IAM roles anywhere, all right? So click under roles anywhere, scroll all the way down. You can see the profile that we have created earlier. Clicked on it, go ahead and copy the Amazon resource name. Go back to terminal, all right? In this case, we can go ahead and paste it right here, okay? And next up, we have the role on. So let's go ahead and enter on that. And once you go back to AWS IAM roles anywhere, you can scroll down under the profile and you can see the role that's been specified here. Go ahead and click on it. So once you clicked on it, it will bring you over into the AWS IAM role. So once you're in the AWS IAM role, what you can do now is once again, copy onto the Amazon resource name, go back to terminal, go ahead and paste it right here. So right now, all we got to do is specify the certificate. So in this case, we have the certificate of client entity dot PAM, as well as the private key. All right. So in this case, client entity dot key. All right. So once you're ready in three, two, one, hit enter on that and boom, that's it done. We have gotten the temporary access right now. So we got the access key ID, we have the secret access key, and we also have the session token. So instead of having to specify the full instruction instead of being able to always get the temporary credentials, what you can do is to go ahead and update the config file in .aws directory. So what I can do is go ahead and enter sudo veen config. And you can see right here, I have the profile roles anywhere and I have the credential process. So in this case, what we can do is go ahead and replace this with the new thrust ankle on the profile on the role on as well as a certificate as well as a private key so whichever you are targeting that on so you can see here i have updated the profile roles anywhere with a target thrust ankle on so the profile on as well as the role on that we have created earlier and of course we have in this case the certificate of the client entity as well as the private key so once you're ready go ahead and do it right quick done so this can be quite an interesting program that you want to write. So perhaps it is an application, perhaps it is a script, doesn't matter, whichever case is. So what I can do now is I go and go and enter say sudo vim and perhaps I create a file and I call this the S3 lister. And then of course I enter .py for that. As you're cutting it out, the most important part is of course to import bottle tree or bottle tree. Okay, so once you have that, you can import any other of these different types of modules that you want. And once you have that, you can enter the following, which is here in this case. All right, we have bottle three dot setup underscore default underscore session. And of course, in this case, we have target the profile underscore name equal. Of course, in this case, we have our roles anywhere. So this is the one you specify in the config file. Next up to demonstrate to you what 
is the caller identity that we have. I can enter, say, the following client equal. So in this case, we vote tree the client and we target STS. So STS is what we call the security token service from AWS. Once I have that mixed up, what I can do is to go ahead and get a response. So perhaps in this case, we can target client dot get caller identity. Okay, so once we have this information right here, I can go ahead and print it out. So I can print response and that's it, done. And this will allow us to know what is the call identity that we're using to gain access into the AWS account. So let's go ahead and do a right quick for this and done. All right, so what we can do now is go ahead and enter Python 3, s lister dot py, hit enter in three, two, one, and you can see the following results over here. Okay, we got a following, and this is the information. So we have the AWS S3 IAM roles anywhere they were using in order to be able to access the AWS account. And now, of course, I'll show you exactly how we can list buckets with the permission that's been specified from the role that we have created earlier, and then we made them available into the AWS IAM roles anywhere profile. So you can see right here, we added the following. So we have client2, boda3.client S3. Now after we have respond, so we're listing the buckets. And finally, we're printing all the existing buckets within the AWS account. So in this case, existing buckets for bucket and response, and we're printing the bucket name. Okay, so once you're ready for that, go ahead and execute on it. So enter Python 3, s tree lister.py, and in three, two, one, hit enter on that. And I can see the following, all right? So we have the first get call identity, which is right here, and followed by the existing buckets that we have within the AWS account. Wasn't that beautiful? Isn't that an amazing tutorial? I hope you really like what you've learned today. Remember, like, share, subscribe, and turn on notifications so that you do not get hacked.